This episode is brought to you by More Fire. Ignite your mind. Yeah. It's the books. They have more books. Oh, it's the books. It's the things that I read, bruh. Ah, oh, man. I never knew you were so smart, bro. That's so dope, man. But listen. <laughs> I don't think it's about being smart, MacGyver. I think it's about wanting to search, you know, because mm-hmm. is that all there is in the world? Is yeah, that, you know. Is this what world is, the world is all up? Like, is this, if I die tomorrow, mm-hmm. is this it? Come mm-hmm. on. Yeah. There's more to the world. And trust yeah. me. It's all in books. Mm, mm, mm. I know there's a book that you, that you love about some black CEO who managed to rise from the bottom to run some big corporations in the country. Which, which one is that? Yes. I need to write. I need to get that. His name is Mteto Nyati. Yeah, I need to get that. One of the most amazing business people in this country. Is the time. Let me read the synopsis of this book quickly, Macabre, and I just want to encourage young people to read it. And by the way, every 7 p.m. in the evening, I've got a live YouTube show started last week. Nice. The synopsis of this book, quickly, Macabre, before you continue, says if you want to take the system down, provide a better alternative at least. You can't just say to people, hey, call me great, yeah, don't give up, and you don't offer them any solution. At least, you know, when I said, guys, don't give up, I offered them more fire to go sell and make money. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm. That's what that's what they're saying here. You can't just only preach. You must offer them an alternative. And then they say here, at heart, I'm an engineer. I think it's a statement that was said by him. I'm an engineer. I want to encourage people to fix things, not to raise false hopes. And then it says here, the rest of the synopsis, Tony Ati knew years ago as a schoolboy in Mtato working behind the counter at his mother's trading store that he wanted to fix and build things. And after completing his studies in mechanical engineering at Natal University, he turned down a Rhodes scholarship and headed for Johannesburg to take up a position at a company called Afrox. He was the only black engineer and he saw all, and the sole advice he received from his superiors was, don't mess up. Well, he didn't. Today, Mr. Mtetonya Ati is one of South Africa's top CEOs, having steered Microsoft South Africa and MTN South Africa out of troubled times. He's currently guiding the transition of a company called Altron from a family business started at the height of apartheid into a high-performing international ICT company with social conscience. And that's Mr. Tetonyati. That's a book I can recommend. But I think you're talking about a different book. But uh, now no, that's, that the one, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. I saw okay. it on your live yesterday. You were talking about it yesterday okay. on your live. Yes. There's another dope book. Phil Knight, that's a guy that started Nike, this guy. Mm. Uh, we can't see it. Show that's it. Jackie Pomuta's book, but that's another dope book is that one by Robert Kiyosaki, The Business of the 21st Century. But yeah, the book I was is... recommending today is about leading people, managing people. Mm. Here's the book. It's by N. Parkinson and a guy called Richard McBain. It's called Managing People. Dope, 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 dope book, bro. Now, Sorry, I, see why saying... the, now I see why the Department of Education got you to teach. <laughs> But I've been teaching MacGyver. I mean, how many things did I teach you, you know? <laughs> what did you think of the backlash regarding that, that campaign? I think it's dope and I think it's great because people are responding. And that's, you remember what I said earlier, it's all about sometimes changing a negative narrative into a positive. The fact that they got so many people recognizing the program, I think they should be happy. And that's what I was telling the team. I was like, guys, be happy that it got recognized. Even if it got some backlash, it shows us that our society is concerned with, hey, you know? And I was saying, but I'm not a celebrity. And you guys do know my resume. You know my passion about education and how long I've been serving in high schools. And some people are in universities today. Some are millionaires today. And they'll tell you that I visited them in their schools. And because that's how I've dedicated my life. I always say to people, like, every day that you're living in your life, you're writing your own obituary. So mm. I've lived my life as much as I've done well in what I've done or in entertainment back in the day and now in business. I think simultaneously in parallel, I was um, a part of 
inspiring, encouraging, and helping as many people as I could. And I think, um, and I achieved that. And I think there's still more people I'm going to help. And I think the reason why I'm, I'm pursuing wealth now is because if my entire career till today, physically one-on-one, -on -one, I've probably helped maybe a hundred people, mm. I've probably inspired 10 million, or let me say 1 million, let me say 1 million, let's be modest, let me say 1 million people I've inspired over the past 15 years, and maybe um, 100 people have literally one-on-one -on -one physically changed their lives. Imagine how many people I can impact if I can become wealthy, Ooh. or when, or let me say when, not if, when, when I become wealthy. Because you see, wealth, guys, money is nothing. I don't think people understand that money Money is, not, money is not worth the paper that is print, printed on. For instance, if you look at the dollar, the dollar is the third um, biggest um, currency in the world. There's the pound, there's the euro. Sorry, there's the, sorry? It's the, yeah, it's the pound. Sorry, it's the euro and the pound and then the dollar, right? The dollar is number three. But America does not have gold to back up their, their currency. Currently, they're in trillions or in China. They keep printing money, but their money is not worth the paper it's printed on. <laughs> you know? And that's why people like Gaddafi conspiracy theories say people like him were killed because they were talking about a one currency for all African countries, us coming together and trading with the rest of the world with one African currency. And us, it would be different because we could back up our currencies. Because we, our currency, we could back it up because, I mean, South Africa alone, we've got about 52 minerals, bro. We've got gold, we've got diamond, we've got platinum, we've got ferrochrome, we've got aluminium, we've got coal. We've, do you know what I mean? Like the Western world and the rest of the world has been raping Africa for so many decades that till today it still has not changed. Still has not changed, bro. And now the Western world, not that they've had enough, but they've had so much of Africa that now we think China are better. <laughs> Is it the better devil? I don't think so. They've just chucked out some Africans out there to try and portray them as people who are spreading COVID-19 in China. So I don't think that you and I um, in a space to liberate ourselves fully. Mm. And I think it'll have to be God that intervenes and says, enough is enough with my people. Mm. We're ushering in. And, that, and that's what's about to happen. As I was saying to you, that as much as I don't think ourselves and our children are going to experience it in our lifetime. But I think God is saying enough with this world. These are the end times. And I think for the world to have peace, this has to happen. We've polluted the, the, the atmosphere enough. We've cut down enough trees. We've been killing animals. We've been killing people. We've been about money. We haven't been about humanity and mankind. And I think God wants a world like that where we don't have to kill his animals. We don't have to cut down his trees. We don't have to pollute pollute the air we don't have to kill each other we don't do you know what i mean like and i think for that to happen for for light to happen it has to go dark extremely dark macgyver and i think for the next hundreds of years that's what we're going through for our great 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 grandchildren to experience that lifetime of peace wow that's amazing smooth in closing what do you want to be remembered as man when it's all said and done excuse me say that again what do you want to be remembered as when it's all said and done? I don't think I want the world to remember me in any way. I just want my children to be really proud of um, the ideologies that I've been for without having to use politics, without having to use religion, without having to use um, any famous people. I don't come from any famous family, etc. I really do want my children to spread the word out there and say our dad believed in himself so much and he believed in humanity and mankind and he believed in God so much so that we want to um, footsteps, you know, and I think, um, and that's what I want. I really do believe in humanity. I do believe there's a lot of good in everyone and in every race. And as much as we always blame the white man about what happened in our past, I don't want us as black people to dwell under that negative victim mentality. That's a trap. And in some sort of way, I think that's what Kanye West was trying to say when I was talking about slavery. Yes, 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 <laughs> you know, yes, and yes, I think that, that's a trap. I think he was trying to say, let's stop being victims. Let's stop dwelling on that victim mentality and be solutions driven and be future driven. Now, okay, yes, that's what happened about us. 
then what type of thing. But uh, when I look back and I look at scholars and African leaders in the past, it's always been about, yeah, the white man this, the white man that, and this is what happened, this is what they did to us. And what we speak is what you're attracting to yourself. It'll always be about what happened in the past. And I think we should be different right now. Yes, we know that we are great. Yes, we know that life started in Africa. Yes, we know that we're kings and queens. Yes, we know that we are lied to about a white Jesus. Yes, we know that we are great. Yes, we know that we came up with all these great and awesome in inventions. As much as our young people don't know that information, it's up to us to write those books, to document that information, to start thinking differently and be solutions driven. Not mamlo mokpela. Act. Action changes things, MacGyver. It's A-C-T. Action changes things. Act. Don't just talk about it, gossip about it. Act. I'm acting. I'm acting. I'm acting. We're employing almost 100 people with this. This is in our immediate office. Imagine the thousands and thousands of young people that make a living selling this every day. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's with the same with the, the other things I'm involved in, the books that I'm writing, etc. I am acting. A lot of people don't act. A lot of people speak and complain. And I think where we are right now, guys, it's time to act. That's A-C-T. Because action changes things. Wow. Love that. Love that. So, okay, let's talk about what you're busy with. You're doing so many things. You've got an album coming out. I'm excited about that. I saw your WhatsApp status when you were working, cooking the song, the single that's about to drop soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it, love it, man. Let's just talk about that quickly. MacGyver, I think a lot of people have um, used this time as some sort of a, um, an unofficial holiday. Sorry, let me, let me, let me, let me. I think people are using this as some sort of an unofficial holiday, MacGyver, you know? Mm. And that's dangerous because you fall into a comfort zone. You fall into a trap of thinking or believing that nobody's doing anything, so it's cool. Let me just sit down. Yeah. I'm currently working on my new album. Album is done. It's ready to be released, but you can never be satisfied as a creative. I mean, creatives out there know whether you create clothes, you create products, you create music, you create art, poetry, books, whatever you create, you can never be satisfied. You just want better. So I'm working on new songs. I'm working on the album. I haven't made music, bro. Yeah. I haven't released an album in almost 10 years, MacGyver. That's crazy. I took a break and I went to start Leadership 2020. I went to start Local Flame Vodka. I went to start Mo Fire Beverage Company. I went to start Massive Metro, etc. And I went to write three best-selling books. So at least I did something productive mm -hmm. and something that contributes to history over the past eight years that I've been out of music. But coming back, it doesn't mean that you just come back and you just get a hit record and you rock yeah. and roll like that. For and me, you it's... With my buddy, so. <laughs> and, the, and, 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 and I'm proud of my youngster. Shout out to my buddy. He says, one of my youngsters, I mean, I've been working with him from when he was a come up, working in Oskido's house, Oskido Studios. Uh, I remember even when we did a song called Kobo Losing with my police <laughs> and Tandy Man. We did a lot of songs when he was even before Uhuru. Yeah. But I'm very happy with what he has achieved and uh, I'm proud of him for having changed so many lives. Congratulations, my police. It really means a lot for, for young people to see, see you do what you do. That With the God's gift that God has given you, you keep blessing other kids and that's how you, you'll continue succeeding. But with that being said, MacGyver, I don't want to be on the top 10. I don't want to be number one right now. Yes, I did when I was younger, when I was full on as an entertainer. Right now I'm an OG, bro. Like I just want to do music for music and I want to be inspired to do music. And the reason why I haven't made music all these years, I haven't been inspired to do so. I'm excited. I'm, 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 I'm really happy because I've been playing the long game. I recorded a video, a video uh, I think it was about three months ago, MacGyver, it's on YouTube, and I said, message to the 45-year-old spoo. I'm 40 years old now. I was speaking to myself five years from today. Wow. And I was telling how great that guy, will, well, I was telling how great that guy is, whatever <laughs> he is. And I was telling him whatever he is, he's there because of the sacrifices that I'm making <laughs> me right now. <laughs> And I want to encourage you guys to do the same. Like, I love that. record love yourself that. and look at those recordings at least once a year on your birthday and say, wow, this is what I said exactly a year ago last year. This was me. Mm -hmm. What have I achieved in the past year? What skills have I acquired? What personal development initiatives have I taken to grow myself, to become a better person? 
where is my life right now? Where am I going? What are the mistakes that I've done? How am I going to operate moving forward, etc. And I like the fact that I'm very expressive. I like the fact that I've worked on Reddit because I mean, you can see even now, you just ask me one question and then I go on. Mm. And, I, and I love people like that who know their strengths, but at the same time, who know their weaknesses. Because that's how you succeed, knowing your strengths, appreciating God and what God does for you. But at the same time, replacing your weaknesses with a team that can help substitute for those things that you are not good at. That's why it's always teamwork, MacGyver. Yeah. Spuda, thank you so much, man. I feel for me like this was a selfish interview because most of the stuff that you're saying now, I really needed to hear that. And I hope people that are watching this um, can also relate because like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm ready to fuck shit up, you know, just after hearing you, man. It's, it's, it's amazing. Magava, you're already fucking shit up because right now, if there's any company that is not acknowledging what's going on in the world, they, they'll have to be very stupid. That's why they have to run to entertainers to give them money so they can give them streaming numbers. The next people that they're, go, they're going to be going for is people like yourself. Brace yourself for becoming the next digital millionaire, Magaiba. I'm proud of you. Good luck and all the best, bro. Thank you so much, Spuda. In closing, uh, you're doing so many things, I can't even keep up. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the album coming out. We've got the book. Well, what else is happening? You're doing Insta Live? Okay, I've got a new single. I know maybe by the time everybody's watching this, the single is already out. It's called Mbambane, which is a Swahili word that means hustle. New song, first single out of my upcoming album. First album in eight years of not being in the entertainment industry. For those who don't know, I ran an independent record label from 20 years old. I was 19 turning 20. And turning 21, TK, my business partner at the time, we ran record label, we discovered artists. I became a millionaire at a young, at a young age. Um, I lost a lot of money. I lost everything I had. I got it back up. I lost it again. I got it back up. I made a lot of mistakes when I was young. But I lived out my passion, which turned out to be my purpose. I'm a music fan. I love people out there. I love music fans. I love people that create music. I love producers. I'm a producer myself. I'm a DJ, I'm a musician. I ran a record label for 12 years. Very, one of the most successful independent record labels in South Africa. It's definitely up there in the top five or top three of the uh, most successful independent record labels in, in South Africa or, or the African continent. You can say we definitely are in the top 10. And I think that's great to have done that as a young person. But now as an OG, writing best-selling books, creating startup companies, and growing and having to share this wisdom with the new generation, I'm happy. And that's why I'm happy to keep talking and talking and talking and recording this because I watch videos of Martin Luther King, I watch the videos of Malcolm X, I watch Usteep Biko, I watch how Abu Tupac Shakur and them have shared information on camera and how it has been able to be still consumed today, 20 something or 30 years later. And that's why when I get a microphone like this or when I'm recording, I drop jams because I know at that point that maybe some of the people that are watching this, this footage have long died a hundred years ago, 200 years ago. You know, my children's show, but my companies are around. And I guess people then, what I used to say is making sense because wow, this is what he started back then. Look at how big it is today. And it's no longer around or whatever. Maybe right now it's year 3000 and you're watching this. So I really want to continue being a beacon of hope to my community being the black people. And I just want to say I'm black before I'm anything. I'm black before I'm any religion. I'm black before I am any group. I'm black before I'm any race. I'm black before I'm any political party. I'm black before anything. So nice. And uh, between Tess Records and Kalawa, who do you think would win the battle? I was saying that yesterday. Kalawa would definitely win. <laughs> I think ah, but you give them a run yeah. for their money, bro. Tess! I of course we will. No, of course. Of course we will. You need to remember, we're around for 12 years. They've been around for 20 yeah, yeah. plus years. So yeah. when I got into the game, they've been at it, you know? But when you're, <laughs> when you're talking, you're talking Pongo Muffin. Muffin is one. Uh, you're talking um, Pongo Black Muffin. Motion. Black Motion. Mahuda. Trumpis. Black Motion. Uhuru. Maporis. Oskido. Mahuda. You know what I mean? And we did our thing just for about a decade or so, a little bit longer than that, and that was it. And then we moved on to pursue our other our passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I say they would beat us, I think they've got a bigger catalog, yeah. bigger hits, more hits 
and more classics than we do. And that's why when I came into the game, they've always been our role models mm -hmm. and our inspiration and our benchmark. Mm -hmm. Till today, they'll always be, and I'll always be honest, and say in front of camera how much I look up to Oskido and what they did back in the day. Vinny Da Vinci, um, Chris, um, shout out to Christos, shout out to Don Laga, shout out to Mdu, Arthur, the guys that did it before us. Lindelani Mkize, we remember those Sony Summer Sounds, Ndate Chabu from Wane. Um, I want to give big up to Ndate um, Benjamin Dube, um, Sony Masha, who, I want to give out all these props to all these OGs that have showed us what we can do and what we can become. And I'm glad that we've taken their bait and we've used their blueprint to make ourselves um, and our family successful. But then right now, I think it's your guys' responsibility to learn from our mistakes so you don't repeat them and take the good things that we did so you guys can be better than us. Were you shocked, uh, as I was at Chile's uh, funeral, that not a lot of guys that you started or started with him were not there, you know? Because I think you were the I wasn't only one. Shocked, I knew. No, no, I wasn't shocked. I knew very well because Chile was, uh, was a straight talker. And when you are a straight talker, sometimes you rub some people the wrong way. And unfortunately, when he passed on, he had just done your, an interview on your podcast. And although he was working for us at Massive Metro, you know, I was really, really hurt. But at the same time, not seeing a lot of people in the industry at his funeral was that, uh, number one, it was not that much publicized, although I, I feel some people could have come. But I'm sure some people had just watched the interview and done with him because it was still fresh. And I think when he died and it made national headlines, a lot of people watched your podcast with him. And I don't think a lot of people were so impressed that he spoke about <laughs> that they probably didn't come to the funeral or for whatever reasons, maybe they were busy. Mm. But I really do think that a lot of the people who are speaking about are really good dudes. You know, they're really mm. wonderful guys that even if you can say whatever when you're still alive, when you pass on, you pass on. No matter mm. how much differences we might have had when you're still alive, I really do believe those guys are good guys that they probably would have wanted to come. But I think a lot of them could not come because it was during the week. But at the same time, Chile was so much of a straight talker that I am sure there's probably one or two of them who did not come yeah. because, of, <laughs> because of what he had said on your podcast or maybe because of the relationship that he had had with them. But uh, I'm just glad that uh, I've had to spend time with Chile. I've known him from when I was a youngster. I've watched his career. I've watched his journey. I celebrated him even when I started Massive Metro and no radio station wanted to mess with him. And, you know, I brought him to Massive Metro and uh, unfortunately, things happened that happened, and he left. And at some point, he came back to say, "Okay, I want my job back." And then we gave it back to him again. And unfortunately, still did not work out. And unfortunately, yeah. eventually, lost his life. But I think um, I'm happy with the role I'm playing in society. You know, for me to go get Zola and get him to be a part of Metro, massive Metro. Um, and shout out to Metro FM, by the way, for giving me the opportunity. And and massive Metro to say the name. Let me say it on record. Some people in the future they might say. I might have started that name because of beef, because I was mad that I was fired. No, Metro is taken from Metropolitan. Mm. Our station, because it broadcasts in Johannesburg, the Johannesburg Metropolitan, it is a massive Metropolitan station. So that's why it was massive Metro. Okay. It's not because of Metro FM. You know, although I've always been inspired by Metro FM and I'll always look up to Metro and be grateful for what they did in my career. I guess... I got him to come to become a part of it because I believed in his talent and because of how much of a brother he was to me. Unfortunately, he passed on and may soul rest in peace. And I was glad to have met his children and his family. And wherever they are, if they're watching this video at a later stage, maybe many years from today, I wish them all the best. And I want them to know that their father was one of the greatest radio jocks on air. Once he gets the mic, he'll be the best DJ you'll ever heard, you've ever heard on the mic. One of the best, 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 best. He's high up there on the top five or high up there on the top three. If you want to count Kansas City, the late Kansas Mkunume, so rest in peace. Uma Malindi Antulume, so rest in peace. Uba Kos Khate, no Fetjo, U DJ Fresh, Alex J, Uma Gilman, U DJ Smu, U Kabzela, may so rest in peace. There's a lot of us. I think Chili M's name is high up there with the best of them. Speaking about greatness, I've been trying to get Zola on for the past year. Hey, man, I don't know how to get him on, bro. I can't crack him, bro. <laughs> can never crack Zola. Hey, will you speak to him for me there? I think Zola is too smart for a lot of people's comprehension. 
of how he thinks and the type of person he is. I asked him for a podcast on the Aspers Corner. He, he didn't refuse, but I can see that he doesn't want to be on camera. And I think he's got his own reasons. And sometimes I turn to respect that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I let people sort of simmer down. And whenever I feel, or maybe they feel, whenever they feel they're ready, I kind of um, ask them again, maybe six months later or nine months later and see if they're willing to. I will ask him and then I'll also pass you his contacts. Um, yeah, I've got his contacts. I've been chatting to him and like you're saying, he's not for it, you know, and I keep trying. I don't think he's not for it. Mm. I think he's probably not in a good space right now. You know mm. what I mean? Sometimes not that you don't want to do something. People have got their own different reasons. It doesn't mean that when something did not happen your way, MacGyver, that person hates you or that person does not want to be on your on your podcast. You need to remember your podcast is is is, is the biggest or the fastest growing podcast in South Africa. And mm. he knows that it's not only that it's the biggest, it's that it's going to exist online forever. And mm. and once you partake in recordings like these, especially like, as somebody like him who's been away for so long in the mm. spotlight, I think you want to be ready when you go in mm. front of the camera. Mm. I think even you, you remember with me, I was like, okay, not today, not, not yeah. this day, bro. Let's do it on a different day. Yeah. Because I knew also there's quarantine and maybe I'll be ready at that time. Or You know, he's got his own reasons. But mm. I want to tell you, the day you sit down with Zola, it will be the best podcast you've ever done with anyone. Yeah. Not in terms of numbers, not in terms of numbers, but because of the type of person he is mentally. He is the most intelligent brother I have ever met who does not have a degree. Wow. You're fucking kidding me. If you see Tupac or you see those types of people that are conscious and that are, Zola is like that. Like Zola grew up reading books. Zola doesn't have a degree or does not have a, a PhD, but Zola is more intelligent than people with PhDs and masters, etc. It's just naturally. But he doesn't brag about his intelligence. I think he's always, over the years, been like the likes of Abu David Icke, people who'd be um, dismissed as just conspiracy theorists or dismissed as a if because the things that they say, humankind is not ready to comprehend that type of message. But because of what the world is going through right now, where we are, I think it's times like these that the world needs, needs to listen to people like Zola. And... Um, uh, I forgot his name. Um, oh, I'll give you the name of, of these types of brothers that I'd like to speak mm. to. People who are conscious, who are not just only going to tell you, yeah, this is what happened at that club, or that was, that's mm. what happened at that club. Mm. But people that are going to teach mm. people with consciousness and arm your, your following or your audiences with consciousness. I'll start sharing those types of names. And some of them, I'll speak to them and, and I'll, I'll forward them to you because do, I believe there's a, there's got a lot to teach our young people. Yeah, thank you so much, Spoodle. Just like your name, I hope you continue to bless, you know, more people out there, God willing, you know, because uh, I love everything that you're doing. I keep WhatsApping you and saying, dude, you're an inspiration and you do it time and time and again. So thank you for that, man. Yeah, really proud of you too, bro. And I want you guys, young people out there, as my uh, my last parting shot to learn from MacGyver. MacGyver worked for Y. He worked for Highfold. He was big on Y. He was big on Highfold. Had a great career. And when things happened in his career, some people wrote him off as if he was done. But I want to say to you, learn from MacGyver's experience because his experience is like my experience. It doesn't mean that when you're fired by these big institutions that it's the end. Believe in yourself that you can think out of the box and create your own thing that you can build over long term, but it ends up became, becoming something great. And that's exactly what MacGyver is doing with this podcast. And I have no doubt that this podcast is going to be one of the, it was already the biggest in South Africa now, but I've got no doubt that in five or 10 years time, it's going to definitely make, make him a multimillionaire because that's where the world is going, digital. So I want you guys to learn from people like MacGyver that when they fire you or when you lose your job, when things are hard or when you feel like it's the end, it is not really the end. It's not the end until God says so. Thank you so much, man. Couldn't have closed it better. Thank you so much. With all the best, my G. I love you, bro. Proud of you. God bless. <laughs> I'm Take sure more flavor is proud of you. For those who don't know, MacGyver and More Flavor came at the same time. They were the best of friends. More Flavor is killing it at Metro FM as a breakfast host. MacGyver is killing it as the number one podcast in the country. I can't help but be proud of these young people. What are you as a young person? 
doing with your life. Thank you so much, Buddha. <laughs> Peace, bro. Take care, man. Sweet, sweet. This episode is brought to you by More Fire. Ignite your mind. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Lynn Moleko.